Good morning. Good morning. All right, filled up a little bit. I, I uh, was uh, sharing with a, a couple in here. Welcome to Low Attendance Sunday. Um, uh, it's, it's those uh, that, oops, I forgot. There's some who didn't make it to Sunday school, I see. Um, and, uh, uh, and that might have been the case. And there's probably some who found out this morning. And so instead of being here, you're on um, at home. And so uh, welcome. And next week you will not have an excuse. Um, so again, great, uh, great uh, to have you all here. And um, just a couple things that are, that are coming up that I want to make sure that all of us are, are aware of. Some of the same things, because again, I just don't want you to, to miss uh, some of the opportunities uh, coming up, especially uh, when things like celebrating Christ's resurrection um, and all the things that are, that are coming up um, fairly soon. Um, Tonight, Disciple Life, again, uh, ladies in the Fellowship Hall, uh, men, 
initially outside, uh, depending on the weather um, and depending on the ladies, and then uh, youth over at the Goods. And uh, again, that's all at 6 o'clock. And um, if you haven't come, it's a great time to be able to take what God has been saying to you throughout the week, as well as even this morning. Um, and so, um, next week, the Adult Four uh, Sunday School Department will be starting their Sunday school back. Not, uh, just to make sure you remember the details, 9.45 in the morning in the fellowship hall. Um, and so um, the, the lesson uh, you're picking up where you left off a year ago, um, and, and that is uh, from Luke chapter 1, verse 26 through 2, 7, um, and Jesus the Deliverer is born. Um, and so, um, I, Charles, I know you're excited about it, and, and I just saw um, Faye come in, and you're excited about that, and, and hope the Adult 4 department, as other classes uh, resume, um, you know, we will let, uh, we will let you know uh, about that. So, um, again, just uh, glad, uh, glad some of these things are beginning again. Um, just a, a reminder, um, uh, I mentioned last week about uh, the letter from the principal and all, but um, being able to encourage these teachers, um, even if it, had no, if, if it had nothing to do with the year of COVID, um, uh, this is when it gets tough as a teacher this, you, you could see the light at the end of the school year, you know, and, and it gets tough because so do the students see the light at the end of the tunnel and all that. And so let's, again, let's keep encouraging our teachers and, um, and again, appreciate what you have done throughout this whole school year uh, for them. Um, this is uh, the time that we collect for Annie Armstrong. I've been a little bit low key on that because I wanted to push it through the month of April, um, and, and one of the reasons was uh, we were asking for that extra for the carpet, and I did not want people to have to make that decision of missions or carpet because it should be missions all the time. Um, so there are prayer guides; um, it, they're in the back foyer, and so make sure you grab that on the way out uh, and to to walk you through. Uh, a week of prayer for missions. Again, you can collect this and do it two weeks from now, or you may wait till to to um, uh, for the beginning of a April. But again, we want to make sure we are faithful to pray and we are faithful to give uh, to what used to be called home missions, but now missions in uh, North America. And um, there are going to be some of our normal Easter events. Um, the, the, obviously, our Easter Sunday morning service. We will be doing the sunrise service. I'll put something up next week about that. But I needed to mention this, an Easter egg and scavenger hunt. Um, it's going to be different because it needs to be all outside. And so there's a couple different activities we're going to be doing. It's not going to need as many volunteers um, as what we've had. There's not going to be a meal as well because again, being able to try to eat and pass out food together and all that other stuff. But um, here's what we need uh, from you now. Um, it is going to be the Saturday before uh, April 3rd. 11 to noon. Um, and here's what we need. Guess what? Candy. Okay? Uh, it's not going to be in all the little eggs and all that. It'll be in a little basket they get at the end of, of their, their, their game time. Um, and uh, they'll be, we want to give them plenty to remember the, the day. And uh, there's also ways through the events they're doing of sharing the Easter story. To me, if we're just doing it about getting eggs and candy, you know, that's not what we're about. We're about sharing what Jesus has done for us. So again, to be a part of that, we'll let you know more as that date comes up. But uh, right now, we need candy donations up to the week that Sunday before, okay? So um, I appreciate, appreciate your, your help in, in that. And um, I'm trying to think, there was there something else that came to my mind? And it's gone. So, um, uh, but again, I'm so glad to see you. it does happen more often. Um, but uh, it is uh, good to have you here. Um, let's uh, let's uh, talk about prayer needs. Um, I want to mention uh, to you uh, what I'm aware of, and you may have some towards towards me. Um, uh, remember, um, Tommy. Um, he has uh, Eleanor's. Um, brother uh, 
had a mass in the lung, and uh, they were also doing an operation uh, for kidney stones. Just remember him. Um, there is a, um, uh, a young man, a teenager in our community. Um, his name is Noah. Um, and again, I try, I try to be careful about not using last names, so this is broadcast potentially to the whole world. Um, but uh, his, his parents, Eddie and Dina, um, he, he, has, he had a mass in his abdomen. Um, it was removed uh, in surgery, but now they're at the part of talking about treatments. So there's still a lot of unanswered things because they've yet to meet with our doctors, but, but um, they have asked for prayer for Noah. And, um, and so we are going to do that. Um, also, I wanted to mention Leslie. Um, um, she is uh, undergoing some, she has been having treatments, but the treatments are now more aggressive. And so let's remember uh, Leslie in, in her battle with cancer. I mentioned Angela uh, having gallbladder surgery. Uh, that happened and, and she is doing well, but just pray for the recovery. Um, there. Um, also, I mentioned Harold to you, and he just he, he just has some needs now, and so wanted to pray for him and for the whole family. Um, and then uh, I mentioned uh, uh, Ross to you. Um, he is recovering um, from surgery, um, but he's also having rotor rotor rotator cuff surgery as well, shoulder surgery. So. Um, be praying for Ross in, in that. And so, are there other needs? Other prayer? Yes, Travis. Okay, and that was Reba. Okay. Others this morning. All righty. Let's bow for prayer. We said, blessed be the name. And Jesus said, let me tell you something you could do with my name. Come to my Father in my name. So let's bless his name. Let's come to the Father with these needs in front of us. And Jesus, in your name, in the authority, in the power of your name, we lift up these needs. Father, we, we pray for Ross and this surgery uh, that he is facing and, and recovering from, and just any other medical needs. Uh, we join Nikki, who mentioned this uh, to me, and, and so I pray for him. Uh, Father, uh, we join uh, in praying for Reba um, and the cancer that she has and, and that which is happening for it um, from treatments to surgeries. And, and, and so, Father, we pray uh, for her. Um, God, uh, I pray for Harold. And God, just the needs that he has and his family have. And so, Father, we bring... We bring him up to the one who can meet every need. Thank you that Angela is, is doing well, but God, it is a recovery time and, and help her in that period of time. Uh, Father, we, we pray uh, for Leslie and um, God for just the effectiveness of this treatment against the cancer as well as the strength for her body to undergo this treatment. Uh, Father, uh, we, we again pray with Eleanor for her brother Tommy with this mass in his lung. Uh, Father, we pray for Noah. And we pray for him and his need. Um, and again, thank you that they were able to go in and do surgery. Um, and then God for whatever else is needed. Again, I pray for, for his parents, Eddie 
and Dina. And God, just, just uh, we pray for that whole family during this time. And God, as we go into a time of supporting missions, uh, God, we pray. We pray for the impact that our missionaries have in North America. Starting uh, new churches, reaching people groups that have not been reached. Um, and, and God, just a whole variety of, of ways. And so we pray for them. That you would support them. And that God, you would use us in that. We pray these things, Jesus, in your name. Amen. Thank you, God, for your amazing grace. If you take your Bible and turn to John chapter 15, uh, we've been in John 15 and talking about what it means to be 
on the vine. I am the vine. You are the branches. Um, and what that means, and again, I, I won't uh, go too much into where we've already been with this, um, but I do want to, to talk about that uh, um, you can go and, and watch those videos uh, on, on our YouTube channel and, and catch up that way. One of the main things we've learned is um, our job as branches is not to bear fruit. I know that sounds, wait, but that's where the fruit is. Our job is to what? Anybody? Remain on the vine, cling to the vine, and fruit will come. See, when we're trying to make fruit, who's doing the effort to make fruit? Yeah, we are. And if we're the ones doing it, uh, uh, what did Jesus say? Apart from me, you can do a little bit. Nothing. You can do nothing. Now last week, we looked a, a little bit more. Jesus said, you know, you know, abide in me, abide in me, remain in me. You know, depending what translation you have. I like to use the word cling, hang on. And it's not hanging on because if we let go, he's going to let go of us. No, it's just, it's, it's we are dependent on him. We are, we are um, needing him. But last week, the, he added this aspect. He says, remain in my love. Remain in my love. And again, it wasn't about kind of a clinging relationship where we're, we're going, oh, oh, you know, I'm afraid you're going to leave me. I'm afraid you... No, no, no. We, we, we rest in his love. We abide in his love. We are not trying to earn his love. We are just receiving the love he has freely given and the fruit of remaining in his love is we will love others. And Jesus said, listen, this is one commandment I give you. Love one another as I've loved you. Now that's a hard commandment, but it's easy to remember. Um, and so when we realize how much God has loved us, when we truly abide that, oh God, you really do love me. And we sing songs like Amazing Grace and just simply being amazed that God would love us, no strings attached. When we truly grasp that, we will start wanting to give that to those around us. We didn't deserve it. Yet he freely gave, gave it. There are people in your life, and there are people in my life who don't deserve it. But they realize that he gave his love anyway will make me still want to love. And you know what? There's sometimes I don't deserve the love. And I'm so thankful when I receive it as well. And so he ended this passage just with, with, with verse 17. Of John 15. This is my command. Love each other. And so we cling to Christ. And the fruit is Christ lives his life out of us. And, and, and so we cling to love, and the result is the love of Christ goes to other. And so we love, love, love everybody. And then everybody in return, love, love, loves us. Right? Unfortunately, no. Because when we're living the life of Christ, not in our power, but His power through us. We will get the same treatment He got. And so He continues. Verse 18. If the world hates you, keep in mind, it hated me 
first. Why? <laughs> why, why, would we, why would we be persecuted? Why would we be persecuted? He goes on in, in, in verse 19, because of our relationship with the world. He says, you belong to the world. It, it would, if you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world. But I've chosen you out of the world. That is why the world hates you. Yes, you used to be a part of the world. And you switched sides. You are no longer a part of the world. You're no longer to be conformed to the image of this world. You're no longer to follow the patterns and to be like everybody else is in this world. But guess what? The world views us as traitors. You think you're something, don't you? You, you think you're better than me. No, we don't think we're better. We actually realize we were so bad we needed Jesus. And so one of the reasons why we're persecuted is, is because we're in this new relationship with the world. We, we don't belong. The Word of God says that, that we are now considered aliens. And I don't mean green people, just you're not from around here. Why we're persecuted is our identity with Christ. He goes on, verse 20. Remember the words I spoke to you. No servant is greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you also. If they obeyed my teaching, they will obey yours also. There's this identity that we have with Christ. And let me, let me just share it with a story out of the book of Acts. Paul went about, and he was about persecuting Christians, and he was trying to arrest them, and he, he had a hand in, in, in Stephen's martyrdom, and all these things and all that. And then on the, on the way to Damascus, he met Jesus, and Jesus' words to Paul was, or he was called Saul at the time, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Not my church, my people. You mess with them, you're messing with me. We have an identity with Christ. You're telling yourself here. You ever gone to the store, a store? Pick your type of store, whether grocery or retail or, or whatever, or, 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 you know. And you're not having a good experience. You can't find something or, or whatever, or, or, or maybe there, there's, you're trying to return, but the policy is you can't return it for some reason, and you're talking to the person behind the cash register. How are you towards them? To be honest, and I've been in customer service a long, long, long time ago. I get people so mad at me. But it wasn't because I wasn't trying to help them. It was because I was the representative of the company. And they were mad with the company. And so they took it out on me. Jesus is saying, you're identified with me. It's not you they're mad at. It's me. And that's just a reality of it. Now here, we're Christians are like, why are people so mad at you? But, but you know, listen, we're coming towards, towards Easter and the resurrection. But what happened before the resurrection? The cross. That's what the world did to Jesus. See, Jesus' is, Jesus is kingdom and values are opposite of what this world says. See, the world says, get even. Jesus says, forgive. The world says, fight your way to the top. Jesus says, the greatest of you is a servant. The world says morality is defined by each individual. 
Jesus says, thus saith the Lord. The world says that man is essentially good. Jesus says that we all are sinners, but he came to die to pay for that sin. The world says there are many ways to God, and Jesus says no one comes to the Father apart from me. See, listen, the gospel means good news. And doesn't everybody want to hear good news? But in order to realize that it's good news, you have to realize the bad news. And the bad news is that all of us are sinners in need. That we can't save ourselves. And people don't like that message. People don't like saying that we're not good enough, that we don't measure up. But that is the bad side of the gospel. The good news of the gospel is even though we are sinners, God loved us and sent His Son to take care of that. So why does the world persecute? Jesus goes on to say it's because of their ignorance of God. They will treat you this way because of my name. For they do not know the one who sent me. Now listen, who were the ones that were the instigators, the ringleaders of Jesus' persecution? The people who were religious and knew this book better than anybody. They might have known some facts, but they did not know relationally Jesus. The world persecutes because, listen, they want to make God in their image. They want the love of God, but not the holiness of God. They want to redefine Jesus as only that one who holds and kisses the babies and heals and all these wonderful things that they forget that he also said, go and sin no more. So the world persecutes because of its ignorance of God and who he is, but it's also, it persecutes because it's guilt and sin. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would not be guilty of sin. Now, however, they have no excuse for their sin. And Jesus went about and shared, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And it's like, now they have no excuse. Earlier in John chapter 7, he tells his disciples, the world cannot hate you. But it hates me because I testify to what it does is evil. And he was actually talking to some of the religious leaders around him. That it hates me because I testify that there's evil. And right after John 3.16, right? Don't we all love John 3.16? For God so loved the world. And, and we, oh, I love it. I mean, and then John chapter 17. Because God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved to Him. Wonderful, wonderful verses. What's the next verse? Whoever believes in Him is not condemned. Wonderful. Isn't that great? All right. But whoever does not believe stands condemned already. Well, that didn't sound good. Because he's not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. This is the verdict. Light is coming to the world. But men love darkness instead of light because their deeds are evil. Two more verses here. <laughs> Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed. But... Whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that it may be seen plainly what he has done and has been done through God. Listen, we're all sinners. But how do we respond to the light? Do we say, God, expose me? 
so I can repent. Or I don't want to know. Listen, the same light that's on that attracts the moths repels the cockroaches. <laughs> the world, because of its guilt, Paul says to Ephesians chapter 5, For you once, you were once darkness, but now your children, now your light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists of goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. That, and that verse is just saying, listen, you too were in darkness. Oh, but you're not anymore. And then it says this, and this is where persecution begins have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. Yes, that is sin. But we've all sinned, and we need the Savior. So why the, why the world persecutes? Because of its ignorance of God, because of its guilt of sin. Because of its rejection of God. Verse 23. He who hates me hates my Father as well. We live in a world that does not want to answer to a holy God. Doesn't want some God above us telling us, what we're supposed to do. Doesn't, doesn't want some God to come in and get into our business. So we invent another God or we say there is no God. Rejection of God as well as a rejection of proof. Jesus says... If I had not done among them what no one else did, they would not be guilty of sin. But now they have seen these miracles and yet they have hated both me and my Father. But this is what to fulfill, to fulfill what is written in their law. They hated me without cause or without reason. And Jesus is going, he's, he's talking to the reaction of what was going on to him. And, and he's like, you know, he healed the sick. He healed the blind. He healed the leper. He cast out demons. He fed 5,000 men and everybody else. And 4,000 men and everybody else. He raised a son back to life. He, a daughter as well as Lazarus. And then they walk up to him and go, Give us a sign. <laughs> you, want, you want my resume again? <laughs> you want to see all the things you already know I've done? It's a chosen ignorance. A chosen rejection of proof. So, let's all go home now. Yay, we're going to be persecuted. <laughs> All right. How we can face persecution. Jesus didn't just say it's going to be really, really bad, and though he does. But he also says, here's some things to help you. Some things to know. Some things I'm going to do for you. Not to say that persecution will lessen, but it will help you through the times of persecution. One, we are given the Holy Spirit. Verse 26, when the Counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, He will testify about me. Listen, I am, I'm going, guys, he says you know, later that night. I'm leaving you, but I'm not leaving you alone. I'm going to leave you with my Holy Spirit. He's going to be the one that's going to give you the power. And listen, just weeks later, <laughs> these same guys that are listening to Jesus are arrested and they're beaten and, and, and they're going through and, 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 and they're released. 
And I get into a room and say, God, keep giving us boldness to keep going. And it says in Acts chapter 4, after they prayed, the room they were, were meeting in was shaken and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God boldly. Jesus saying, I'm not going to leave you alone to face this alone. I will give my spirit. But I'm leaving you with a task. You must testify. For you have been with me from the beginning. Now, specifically, that was two, the twelve. Really, the eleven at this time. But it, it does go to us as well. The beginning of our relationship with Christ. The walk we've had with Christ. That we are to testify. Paul says it this way of, of what, it, what it will be like. We are to God the aroma of Christ. <sighs> Jesus. We're that aroma of Christ among those who are being saved. That, oh, I want that. But we're also the aroma of Christ to those who are perishing, to the one where the smell of death, you know what death smells like. Half eat a chicken leg. Put it in your kitchen garbage can. Wait three days. Okay? You know, it is the smell of death. Ugh! Get that out of here. Get that out. Listen, listen. We are the aroma of Christ and to those who are perishing it's a stench. To the other, to one were the smell of death, to the other were the fragrance of life. Who is equal to such a task? Fortunately, the task is left to us, but He's given His Spirit to help us in this. So we're given the Spirit, we're given a task, and we're given a warning. A couple warnings. A warning of the snare of persecution. Here's what can happen. And I've, I've talked with people who've gone through or struggling with this snare. Chapter 16, verse 1. All of this I've told you so that you won't go astray. <laughs> I'm telling you that you're going to go through it. It's going to be hard. They're not going to like you. You're going to love, love, love them. And they're going to hate, hate, hate you. Many of them. And I want you to know, I'm totally telling you this, so that you're not going to stumble because of this, be tripped up because of this. Peter puts it this way, Dear friends, don't be surprised at the painful trial you are, you are suffering as though something strange were happening to you. Listen, if you start getting persecuted, if somebody turns towards you and they're like mad at you or whatever like that, don't be going, oh, what did I do? Now, now there may have been something you did to offend. Okay, don't you be the offense. Let the message be the offense. But don't think you did something wrong because somebody rejects it. Watch out. Don't be tripped up because it's actually normal. And then the warning of the intensity. He tells his disciples, they will put you out of the synagogue. And, and to us, sir, we're going, okay. <laughs> Listen, this is what it meant to be cast out of the synagogue. It was a social persecution. You were shunned by the whole community. You were considered an outcast. You were, you were impacted economically. Because if you weren't part of the synagogue, people didn't go do business with you. Um, it, was, it was, you know, different things and, and different things that we might face today. Listen, we can be legally <laughs> um, uh, uh, attacked. We can be physically attacked. I'll put you out of the synagogue and I mean, it's even worse. In fact, a time is coming when anyone who kills you oh, will think he's doing it for God.
they will do such things because they have not known God, the Father, or me. I've told you this so when the time comes, you will remember I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you and now he's saying and now I'm going. Paul wrapped it up talking to his uh, young pastor or one he raised to be a pastor. Put it point blank. In fact, everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Again, we're, we're not doing things to bug people. We, we want to share the love. And obeying the Father, sharing the love enough to share the truth means we will be persecuted. See, Jesus doesn't sugar sugarcoat it. <laughs> he doesn't say, yeah, come on, follow me, guys. It's going to be easy. Receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, and everything's going to be fine the rest of your life. No. It'll be fine after your life. <laughs> but in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have persecution. Why? Our relationship with the world. Because we're identified with Christ. The world is ignorant of God. And they don't want to hear about their guilt. They've rejected God. They've rejected proof. And we are the only thing that will remind them of it. And let us pray, God, would you give us the wisdom to know when to share and how to share and all that. And we're going, ah, how, how, do, how do I do it right? How do I do it right? Cling to the vine and let him bring the fruit. Sometimes it will be hard. I read about working with vines and why vines are placed up on the hills and stuff like that. It's because vines need Harsh conditions sometimes. Where it gets cold at night, but then warms up during the day. And that's what causes the sweeter fruit. As opposed to it always just being wonderful and all that. This is what brings the good fruit. It is a temptation to go... I need relief from, release from this. And we release the vine instead of clinging harder. So listen, I don't know what type of persecution you may have gone through. I know we're not facing it nearly like it is around the world. But that will change. Maybe some of you are thinking about, yeah, I remember, I remember that last family event and I had somebody get all in my face, you know, and it wasn't because of the mashed potatoes I didn't cook right. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, it's because I was sharing in love Christ. It may be a loss of a friend. But listen, when we share Christ, there's a risk. They may reject him. But let me tell you a greater risk. When we do not share Christ, they may never hear. They never receive Christ and spend eternity apart from him in hell. Let's pray. Jesus, you 
you made the terms simple. We, we just need to focus on one thing, clinging to you. But you're honest as well. That that doesn't mean it's always going to be fun. But will be also times where we're misunderstood. But God, help us to keep clinging. Even when it gets hard. Knowing that you will have your spirit there to empower us. To keep doing the task. Let us not be tripped up and think, oh, I need to shut up. And then give the lost no hope, no chance of hearing about you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you endured so that we could be saved. Holy Spirit, would you give us the power to endure so others could be saved. I pray in your name. Now with your heads bowed and eyes closed, even those who are at home, do you know Christ? There were some who knew a lot about the Bible in Jesus' day, but they did not know the Father because they rejected the Son. Jesus came and died for our sins and He rose again. He paid for our sin so we could have a relationship with Him. Believe on Him for who He is and what He's done for you and trust on Him. And he will not cast you out. This is not easy believism. Where you just say a prayer and then do the rest of your life. No, it is a commitment of your life to Christ. But Christ holds to you. So maybe where you're at right now, it's about Jesus. I want to make sure I, I am right with you. Forgive me of my sins. I believe you died for them. I believe you died for me. I, re I ask you to be my Savior. I give my life to you. For you gave your life for me. And if you truly meant that, I'd like to know. Whether you're at home or whether you're here in this room. Maybe believers, all those who already are believers, we've let this thing about being afraid of persecution push us and keep us quiet. In fact, we've been persecuting one another. People need to hear the good news. And so, Father, I pray for us that we would believe in you, that we would have faith in you, that you will help us through this difficult, and that we would be like the disciples for when they were persecuted, they rejoiced thinking they were, that they were worthy to endure persecution. That you will put the same spirit in us. So that this world can hear. So the people in the office can hear. So the people at school can hear. So the friends, the family can hear what you have done for them. I pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Um, I'm going to be up here at front if you need to talk.